so you already said it. Um, I'm Andy. I'm a community member um, since the start of Nextcloud. Also worked on the app before. We did the fork, and we're out for like slightly more than a year. Um, so want to share our experiences, how the app's doing, how we adapted to the success of the app. So, well, it's been 14 months to date, um, and we did around about 11 stable releases. Stable release to me means it's either a bug fix release, minor version, or even a major version. So this is just stable releases. We also do nightly builds and whatever, but this is what we provide to the user as stable versions. The adoption rate is pretty nice. It's 78%, um, which is slightly more than 100,000 users. So that's not downloads, it's actually active installations on devices. The download number is rather about 130,000. So um, within the last four weeks, we grow by 12,000 users per month still actively using the app. Um, and this number keeps growing. So last year we started with about 6,000. That just doubled. Um, also for the ratings, uh, we're still pretty successful. It's 4.2 now, which is still pretty good um, for an app on the App Store in Google. So we did quite a lot of progress in different areas. Like I already mentioned, now we have 11 releases. Last year at that time we just had four. Um, so we do this quite regularly. Um, the ratings went a little down, but that's also due to big numbers. If you know math, the higher the amount of ratings grows, the, the more likely it is you end up with a 4.1 or 4.0. So it's impossible to have a five star rating, like on average. Um, but to be honest, we also had some problems with the auto-upload function that will change with the next release. Um, so I'm pretty confident that also the rating will go up again. The number of commits grew quite a bit, so that's like more than a third of new code commit-wise added to the app. Um, we put a lot of efforts into, well, we use statical code analysis tools um, to get the better maintainability of the code base. Um, so the so-called technical depth, the amount of time we would need to spend to fix all issues within the code that might make it unstable. Um, we were able to put, get that down from like over a day to, well, this number is already outdated since last week, so it's less than 11 hours now. Um, we fixed more than a couple of hundred issues um, or tickets, so the amount of pull requests or bugs or feature requests we did within this year grew from like nearly 100 to over 600. That's also due to the fact that now we get um, two paid developers who work for the Nextcloud as a company. Um, so we can put way more effort into the app development. Um, and also the amount of contributors grew quite a bit. To me, that's one reason for it is that, that Frank decided that we don't have a CLA, so you, you don't have to sign it that lowers the barrier to actually contribute codes. We had over 10 new contributions taking part in the Hacktoberfest last year in October. Um, so what do you do now? Um, we grow by like 2,000 people a month more by month by month by month. Um, you've got over 100,000 people who actively use this app. So if you hit a bug, the amount of people uh, who may or may not be annoyed by it keeps growing. Um, you need to keep the app more stable by each release since the amount of people you might hurt gets bigger. Um, so what do you do? Um, in the beginning of last year, we just had a small tool set. We used TransFX, which is still in use all over the ecosystem to do translations. Um, we started with Travis, since that was a natural fit if you use GitHub. Um, they used LGTM, which is the acronym for looks good to me, to, to enforce code reviews. And we really took the time to do manual development builds to push that out to users who were eager to try new features and give us feedback. And all that is time consuming. The, the, the amount of users is growing, so you just don't have the time to do that. So you start to do more automation and use better tools. 
So we moved to drone, which gives us a lot more freedom how we handle our builds. We still use trans effects because that seems to work nicely, but for example, we now um, replaced the LG TM with Pullerproof. Pullerproof is also a nice online service um, with a lot of flexibility. So with Pullerproof, we now enforce two code reviews per feature, so at least two developers have to give you a thumbs up. And if it's flagged design, it also enforces a designer review. So we need a third approval. Yay. Um, we automated the dev build, so every night all features that are flagged ready for dev will be auto merged into another branch, creates a release, and pushes it to FDroid. Um, we started using Codacy, which is a bunch of tools who run on every commit on every branch as soon as we push it to GitHub. It runs stuff for unused code. Um, looks for stuff that's not error prone, um, typical programming mistakes you can make, and lists it all up and enforces you to fix it so the code can't get worse than it's been before. So if you build in a new warning, you can't merge this feature to a master branch, you need to fix it. So that's how we get a better code quality over time. And we also started to use Lint, which is a natural fit for Android. Um, and also, Tobias, uh, who's also an Android developer um, on the team, enforces that you can't create new warnings or errors. It has to go down or at least not go up. So we get a better maintainability of the software um, simply over time. So what you can also expect in the near or further future, we're going to do more for testing, for automated testing, to make sure we don't have regression issues, um, start to do more for integration tests, get back to shorter release cycles. We used to do it like every four to six weeks. Uh, now the newest release still is in development, which should come out during the next days, which will be a really big one. You're going to hear about that later on. Uh, started to use more coverage reports to see how much of the code is covered by testing, use further tools for code analysis, um, and also get back to get uh, to provide quicker app store feedback because that's something that really helps with ratings. Um, at least the next cloud users, they do change their rating if you fix stuff. Um, and last but not least, over the year, over this first year, also the Android ecosystem in regards to next cloud uh, grew quite a bit. These are just including the next cloud client, nine apps, but there are still far more um, where you can do contacts and calendar syncs with Daftroid. We got several bookmark apps out there done by the community, by third parties. We got news readers, SMS backup, like if you get the text messages on your cell phone to get them to the server, notes apps. Um, Passman is still in alpha to do password management. Um, so also that keeps growing and it's something we want to push. Um, Tristan mentioned it for interoperability um, to well make these apps better integrated so they can work together but still be independent. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs>